Uh, let's stay in the Big Ten. Illinois beats down Rutgers. Now, I look at this result, and I'm not surprised at all, but a reminder, Illinois shorthanded, Andre Curbelo still out. But through an injury, are we seeing an emergency? It, Rob, what's going on with Illinois that you think they need to do going forward? So the, the thing that I was really impressed with is the way that Alfonso Plummer's been playing. Uh, he's averaging 24 over his last four games. He's really starting to shoot the ball well. Um, and I think moving him into the starting lineup has been a, a real difference maker for him. He's the guy that can really help space the floor, right? Like all he does is shoot. That's what he's on the court to do is to make jump shots. Um, and his ability to space the floor just gets people off of Kofi Coburn. And my take has been that you want Trent Frazier on the ball being the guy that kind of is the lead guard, the star guard for that team. Because I think that he is so much more of a threat offensively coming off of those ball screens than, than Andre Curbelo is at this point in the season. And oh, yeah. what happens is, I mean, we talked about this. They become so easy to guard when uh, when Andre Curbelo is out there because you just you you play drop. You don't let Kofi Coburn get anything on the roll. You dare Andre Curbelo to beat you, and it has not worked out well for them. You can't do that with Trent Frazier. You know, he's not the passer that Curbelo is. But he's, he's going to make shots. He's going to hit that little 12-foot uh, um, pull-up. He's got the float game in his package. Um, he, he's able to make plays off of the bounce and off of ball screens. I just – I think that having Trent Frazier be that guy, be the main guy, play Alfonso Plummer as a starter, and then whenever Curbella comes back, bring him off the bench. I think that's the best uh, best case scenario moving forward for Illinois. But I'll tell you what, fans, I, I, I said something that got some pushback from uh, – from Illinois fans um, on one of these shows previously. I don't, I said, I don't know how it's fixable. That's your answer right there is to not use Andre Corbello in that role that he was playing. Get, turn the keys over to Trent Frazier, your fifth, fifth year senior, let him uh, figure things out. So here's the thing about this. Um, Trent Frazier went two for 10 from the field tonight, two for 10. Uh, Andre Corbello still out for the fighting Illini. And the final score of this game was Illinois 86, Rutgers 51. Illinois 86, Rutgers 51. I do want to take a moment here. Steve Peichel told us before the season on this very network that he believed that his Rutgers team would be the best that he's had. And that was saying something because the Scarlet Knights came a play away quite literally, from a Sweet 16 last year against a Houston team that ends up making the Final Four. Rutgers thus far has been the biggest disappointment in college basketball. And I know that a lot of people would say they don't, they don't talk about Rutgers basketball because they're not a sexy brand name. But folks, this team returned Geo Baker and Ron Harper. I do not care that Geo Baker was out of this game tonight. You lost by 35. You lost by 35. You've lost to Lafayette. You lost to UMass. Rutgers, you got to be better right now. There was a higher expectation level than this. And I know Steve Peichel right now has to be very disappointed in what he has seen from his team because they are. this is not what the expectation level was in Piscataway. It was not. And I, I will say that right now about the Scarlet Knights that they are a big disappointment thus far. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would call them the biggest disappointment in college basketball because Michigan exists and, and Oregon exists. Um, but they, I, I thought they were going to be better. I mean, we had them in our top 50, and, like, that looks like a laughable mistake, you know? So not I, yet. Yeah, yeah, Oregon was a top 10 team, and they, they, they scored 49 points at home against BYU. Michigan is four and three on the season. Like there's those teams are supposed to be a lot better than Rutgers. There's, 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 Hey, Ashton, tell me if I'm wrong here. You're, you're a New Jersey guy. Is you anybody know, you, surprised that Rutgers is losing to Lafayette? Yeah. yeah. Rutgers shouldn't be losing to Lafayette. I, I, I think um, their issue is just getting adjusted to new roles. Like the, the loss of miles Johnson is a huge loss. Uh, Montez Mathis. I think just overall, like some of those guys, um Point they, yeah they they kind of brought a toughness to to them last year 
gave them an uh, an identity. And I think Miles Miles did a really good job on both ends, changing shots on the defensive end, and then he uh, really came into his own around the basket offensively last year. So that was a that was a huge loss. And um, guys like Ron Harper are trying to figure it out and trying to be more consistent. You know, with now defenses really you know gapped up and really scouting him to like really to really take him away. All right, Ashton, I got to tee you up here right now. Who's the second best team in the Big Ten Conference? Ah, uh, second best in the Big Ten. So it's tough. Um, so you got Purdue. I, I like Ohio State. I'm I'm a Ohio State guy. Okay. Um, well, look, they they beat the number one team in the land. Tell us why. Yeah. So I'm I'm a EJ Liddell. I just think his toughness and you know around the basket. And um, they're starting to make shots on the perimeter, and I think that's just going to be the difference ultimately. Because yes. uh, around the basket, I don't think anybody can really deal with uh, EJ Liddell. So I, I really like Ohio State right now. I, I still, I'm still on. Like I'm back on Illinois. Um, I am. I think I'm higher on Michigan State now than a lot of people are. I think Tyson Walker is kind of coming into his own a little bit as a pass on a decision maker. And I think that using him and AJ Hogarth together uh, works well. And Gabe Brown, um, he's hitting jump shots now. Um, Marcus Bingham, get that. Uh, yeah, the, it, this is over. The, the, this cover's dead. Uh, Marcus Bingham is starting to block some shots and make some plays in the post. Uh, I think Malik Hall is kind of like the X factor on this group. Um, so I, I'm, I'm a believer in Michigan State. Uh, you know who we haven't really talked about much on this show? Uh, but that deserves to kind of be in that conversation. Oh. Who is the second best team in the Big Ten? Wisconsin. You, they're good. They're good. They're really good. Johnny Davis has really grown. Uh, Brad Davison's in his 10th season of college basketball. Mm -hmm. I like T.J. Wall. I like – look, defense is a constant with Greg Gard's program. I still like – but here's the thing. Like a lot of the Big Ten, at times I worry about perimeter shooting, but it doesn't seem to matter with the level of defense and rebounding in that league. Wisconsin should be considered, and the Cole Center is a place where they win over 80% of the games that they play in. So, look, they're a team that's a candidate there. I agree with you about Michigan State. Watching them on the opening night of the season against Kansas Live, I watched them, and I said to you guys a couple of times on Press Row, what is Michigan State doing in the half-court offense? Like, what is, what's going on with their guard play? But, but, 10 assists for Tyson Walker against Louisville. I love to see that. So Tyson Walker is a playmaker. Michigan State doesn't need a point guard who can score the ball. Michigan State needs a point guard who makes the others around him better. Because Michigan State has those players when Malik Hall and when Gabe Brown and the size with, with Bingham and uh, Marble, like Michigan State has a size. They defend. They rebound. They need a playmaking guard to lead them. And I like – I'm buying Tyson Walker as the season goes on. I think we saw against Louisville a playmaking the kind guard of creator he to lead be. them. I and do I like Tom I'm buying Izzo Tyson Walker as coming off that the opening season night goes on. I think sort of being shut down the kind of guard guard to lead and Basically, that. you're thinking Michigan State's very average. I love Izzo in that spot because I think that they do have above average talent that hasn't fully translated because you haven't had the guard to set the table. Walker's the answer to those questions. I am buying the Spartans as a top three team in the Big Ten this season. Yeah, I'm I'm with you there. I'm, I'm with you 100%. Um, yes. I think – I still think Illinois is probably the second best. I, I'll tell you what, with Michigan, I just – I don't I don't see it. I don't think that they're coming back from this. I don't think that – What do you mean by that? So, like, 8-9 game? Yeah, I think that they're probably, like, more in, like, the 6-7 range than they are, like, the 2-3 range this season. They just don't have the, the, the creativity. Like, the thing about them last year, they had two or three guys on their perimeter – that were able to uh, make plays off the bounce to knock down threes that were switchable defensively, that were old, that were tough, that were physical. Uh, Isaiah Liver, Shawnee Brown, um, Franz Wagner, you know, Mike Smith was a guy that can make a play and score. 
Uh, I, they don't have that. You know, Caleb Houston's a guy that's supposed to be out there shooting. He really hasn't made shots. Um, Musa Diabate, I think, kind of overlaps a little bit too much with what um, Hunter Dickinson wants to do and where he's effective. Uh, Devontae Jones and Eli Brooks are – you're relying on them to be kind of the shot creation and the guys that break defenses down and kind of are that first uh, action to kind of get you into drive, kick, draw, help, kick it out, then you got to close out, right? They're, they're not the guys that are kind of built for that. So I just – I think we kind of overestimated what – the freshman talent was going to be on Michigan this season. Hmm. Hmm. Go ahead, Ash. I actually do like the Illinois take um, more so because Andre Car- Carbello isn't playing right now. And I think when he actually comes back, um, you know, you add in Alfonso Plummer with the way he's been playing. And now you only add a, you, you add another playmaker, you know, to their, to their, their perimeter. So, you know, with Kofi Coburn playing that well underneath, um, you had, you had in more playmakers on the perimeter. I think they're, they're a scary team. Well, Definitely. The, the fact that that plumber to your point is, is going for 24 tonight. That's a really good sign for them because like I watched them live against Marquette and it was Trent Frazier or bust in the backcourt. They didn't have enough back there and Curbelo was not good down the stretch. They, they have to let Curbelo kind of ease his way back into what they're trying to do. You know, I think he was trying to overdo it because if you're Andre Curbelo, naturally you're saying sophomore year, people are saying I'm the breakout guy. People are saying I'm going to take this big leap. And oh, by the way, I got to be Io Dosumu's heir. You know, I got to be the guy that takes the throne. And Ashton, you, you know, like that's hearing all that over an off season and then actually taking it in November and running with it, it doesn't always go that easy when somebody's got tape on you from a freshman year. Yeah, it's, it's definitely tough, especially when, once you start to get scouted and teams really start to see your weaknesses and uh, what makes you tick. For the most part, it's it's really tough. So somebody like Corbello really needs to just slow down. I think offensively he, he gets into trouble when he's um, just out of control in general. And then, just uh, being consistent with his jump shot, I think, will open up lanes and gaps. Um, when you talk about just getting downhill and finishing around the basket and just making plays for others. So um, as long as he's under control, I think the sky's the limit. That's just been the issue so far this season where he's just been consistently out of control, where he's been, you know, turning the ball over a little bit more than usual. And you know what else it is? I, I think – they, they mentioned that he had a concussion early on in the season and he's still dealing with some kind of like a neck issue. So he might not have been a hundred percent when all that was going on. And, and, you know, Steve, remember this Ash and Steve Prohm was on here talking about how, what we kind of undervalued with um, Andre Corbello this season was uh, the, the impact of changing a role and what it's going to be like as the fact that you're now the focal point in that backcourt, instead of having, someone like an Io DeSumo back there who everybody pay attention to every single second that he was on the floor. Uh, someone like an Adam Miller, who was a game changing talent as well. Um, that's part of why I think bringing him off the bench when he comes back is probably what's going to be best uh, for him, at least in the short term, right? Like bottom line, like that dude needs some confidence right now. You, you could see it when he was on, like, he just didn't, it wasn't, I don't want to say he, he, he looked like afraid or something like that. It's probably too strong, but he just he didn't have that confidence. And, and to me, like half of the battle of succeeding on a basketball court, it, like any any walk of life, really. But half of the battle of succeeding in sports and on a basketball court is believing that you can do it and having the confidence that you can do it. And that looked lost. Well, at the not only afraid, I wouldn't even I, the way that I saw it from him was. This by the I, way, by the way, Fanta, just just so you know, that it, it's final in Mackey right now. Purdue won 77 to 70. So, like, congrats, Purdue fans. You're going to rank number one on Monday. I'm happy for you all. But I just got to say, good teams win. Good teams win games. Great teams cover. Purdue did not cover. And I am officially right now putting Matt Painter on the hot seat. You're not a great team. You can't cover. Can't cover. You're not a great team. We have a comment here from OLV77, hashtag 11, who says, Purdue is very good. This is to your take about Purdue, which I love this take. Purdue is very good, but far from unbeatable. Two or three losses in the Big Ten for sure. 
Um, hey, buddy. If oh. they if they only if they only lose two games in the Big Ten, do you know how damn good that is? Like, do you know how damn good that is if they only lose two games in the Big Ten, my brother? <laughs> 